Summary of the Distance Between Us by Reina Grande. In 1980, Reina Grande is four years old. Her mother is getting ready to leave Mexico for the United States, which is called El Otro Lado, or the other side, in their poor city of Iguala. Reina, Mago, and Carlos, who are mommy's older children, beg her not to leave, but she says she has to go join their father, who has been working in the US for years to make money for the family. Mommy takes the kids to the house of Abuela Evela, who is the mother of their father. Abuela Evela doesn't like taking care of the kids, so she tells Mommy every week to send money. At their Abuela Evela's house, Reina, Mago, and Carlos have a hard time and are even hurt. They have to sleep close together on a straw mattress and eat scraps from the table. Their grandma ignores them while she cares for her other grandchild, Alida, whose mother, Mara Felix, left for the US years ago. Reina and her brothers have to deal with having lice and roundworms, getting stung by scorpions, and being teased by Alida and all the other kids in the neighborhood for being orphans. When Reina and her brothers hear that mommy is going to have another baby, they feel even worse. They think their parents have forgotten about them. Mommy comes back to Iguala with her new daughter Betty, almost two years after she left. She brings Reina and her brothers to live with her at the house of her own mother, Abuelita Shinta. All of the children are happy to have their mother back. As the days and weeks go by, though, they realize that the woman who has come back is not the same as the woman who left. Mommy tells her kids that Poppy left her for another woman, and her anger makes it hard for her to get along with them. Soon, Mommy finds a new boyfriend, and she tells everyone that she's moving again, this time to Acapulco. When mommy isn't around, bad things happen to their family. Catalina, Reina's cousin, drowns in a terrible flood, and Abuelita Shinta badly burns Betty when she pours hot water on her face. One day, a neighbor tells me that mommy called and said she was finally coming home after a terrible car accident that killed her boyfriend. When mommy gets back, she is crazy and careless, and she tells her sister, Tia Guerra, that she is going to the other side of town to live with her. One day, Reina and her brothers are excited to go to Abuela Evela's house to take what they think is a phone call from Poppy. When they get there, though, they find their dad sitting on the couch with his new girlfriend, Mila. He had been gone for almost four years. Even though the reunion is awkward, Reina and her brothers are soon very happy because they think their father will stay. The next day, Poppy says that he will soon be going back to El Otro Lado, and that he will take Mago with him. Reina and Carlos say they don't want to go and beg to be brought along. Mommy agrees to let the kids leave, but she wants Betty to stay in Iguala. After two dangerous attempts to cross the border that didn't work, Reina, her brothers, and their father finally make it to the US on their third try. In Los Angeles in September 1986, Reina, Mago, and Carlos are getting ready to start school. Poppy tells them that he has high hopes for them because he took a lot of risks to bring them to the United States. He tells them that he will send them back to Mexico if they don't do well in school and take advantage of every chance that comes their way. Soon, Poppy starts to hurt the kids. For example, when Carlos wets the bed, he throws him into a tub of cold water. When Reina refuses to eat spaghetti because it reminds her of the roundworms she had in Mexico, Poppy throws the plate over her head and yells at her. When Mago gets her period for the first time and can't go to school because of cramps, Poppy beats her with a belt. Mila looks the other way and doesn't do much to help Reina and her brothers. One day, Poppy takes a bus downtown and comes back with shocking news, Mommy lives just across town. She came here with her boyfriend, left her friend Betty in Mexico, and is now pregnant. Reina and her brothers are dying to see their mother, but Poppy is furious that they want to see someone who moved to the same city as them and didn't even tell them. Poppy says they can't see their mother until Betty comes to the US a few months later. When Reina and her brothers take a bus to Mommy's new neighborhood, they are shocked by how dangerous and poor it is. Even though Mommy's new flat is dirty and full of bugs, she says that nothing can compare to the poverty she left in Mexico. Reina and her siblings start going to see Mommy every weekend, but Reina can't help but notice that even though the physical space between them has shrunk, 
there are still big gaps to bridge. Mago is the first person in her family to go to high school, so Poppy is proud of her. Reyna gets jealous because she knows that even if she succeeds and meets all of Poppy's standards, she won't be the first person to do so. She looks for other ways to be different from her sister. She starts playing the alto saxophone to please Poppy and to find a way to say what she wants. English is still hard for her, but when she plays the sax, there is only music. Poppy chooses to start taking English classes for himself. He hopes that once he gets a green card and learns English, he'll be able to move his family out of their gang-infested neighborhood. When Poppy finds out that his sister, Imperatriz, has moved into the house he owned in Iguala, he risks getting his green card and goes back to Mexico to get it back. When Poppy comes back, he still hasn't been able to get his property back, and Reyna sees that something inside him seems to have broken. He stops going to English classes and starts drinking a lot. As Mago finishes high school, Reyna, her brother, and sister finally get their green cards. Mago goes to college, and Reyna joins a marching band. But Poppy's abuse is getting worse by the day. Mila tries to explain Poppy's bad behavior by saying he grew up in a violent home, but Reyna doesn't know what to think and isn't sure what to believe. Mago gets tired of Poppy's bad behavior and looks for small ways to get back at him. She throws Reyna's quincera all by herself. Even though Reyna knows Mago is getting into credit card debt, she is thankful for the party. Reyna is doing well in school and band, but Poppy doesn't seem to care much about what she's doing. Reyna leans on Mago when she has problems with boys and feels like she doesn't matter. In 1993, during Reyna's senior year of high school, the two of them, along with Mommy and Betty, take a trip back to Mexico. Reyna is shocked by how much Iguala has changed, and when she sees her family and old friends again, she has a hard time believing that she, too, grew up in such poverty. Mago doesn't care about Reyna's efforts to get in touch with the past. Instead, he wants to go party in Acapulco. The two sisters have their first big fight when they try to talk about how they feel about their Mexican background. When Mago and Reyna go back to Los Angeles, Mago starts looking for an apartment with some friends. She tells Reyna that she can also move in with them and get away from Poppy's abuse. But a few weeks later, when Mago finds a flat, she takes back what she told Reyna. When Mago tells Poppy that she is leaving, Poppy tells Mago that if she leaves, she will be dead to him. Mago stays even though things are still and quiet for a few days, and Reyna thinks if maybe her sister won't leave after all. They all go out to party when Reyna gets into UC Irvine, but the next day, Mago moves out without saying anything, and Poppy tells Reyna she can't go to school. Poppy's drinking gets worse, and Reyna keeps getting beat up. Reyna starts staying in her room and won't come out while her father is home. She does risky things, like starting to have sex with her boyfriend Steve without protection and getting into a dangerous situation with two men who want to hire her as a model. At her lowest point, Reyna chooses to change her life. She ends her relationship with Steve and tells Poppy she's going to community college. She thought there would be a fight or even a beating, but Poppy accepts her choice. Reyna goes to Pasadena City College, where she meets Diana Savas, a professor who becomes her first mentor. Savas shows Reyna a lot of great books from the Latina literature canon. Even though Reyna's class with Dr. Savas is over, she still goes to see him to talk about books and writing. Poppy pushes Mila down the stairs one night, which gets him jailed. Reyna goes to stay with Mommy, but she quickly realizes that she can't live in such a small, dirty space. Reyna tells Dr. Savas the truth about how she was abused at home, and Dr. Savas asks her to come live with her. Reyna accepts. After going back to him for a while, Mila chooses to leave Poppy a year and a half later. She takes money from their bank account and gets a restraining order against him. Poppy is left with nothing, so Mago and Carlos, who are busy with their own families and kids, tell Reyna to take care of Poppy over the summer before she starts at UC Santa Cruz. Reyna reluctantly agrees, and when he does, he finds that Poppy is more calm, friendly, and present than he has ever been. At the end of the summer, 
Poppy tells Reyna and her siblings that Mila has chosen to move back in, but only if Poppy stops talking to them. Reyna is shocked and hurt, so she packs her bags and spends the last few days of her summer break with Dr. Savas. Edwin, Reyna's boyfriend, drives her to UC Santa Cruz a few days later and tells her that Poppy probably didn't want to hold her back anymore because he knew she was going to leave anyway and didn't want to be alone. After her boyfriend drops her off at school, Reyna chooses to let go of her anger towards Poppy and start over. In a coda, Reyna says that she went on to finish college and become the first person in her family to do so. She was a teacher for a long time before she decided to focus on writing full-time. Her first two books were well-received, and she soon started going to talks, conferences, and parties with the Latina writers she had admired as a reader. She got along better with Mila, Poppy, and her brothers over time, and she became an American citizen. In 2010, it was found that Poppy had liver cancer. Even though her siblings sometimes thought that Poppy was finally getting what he earned, Reyna stayed by her sick father's side, putting aside her anger and regret so she could be there for him in his last days. In the end, Reyna and her brothers let their father's doctor take him off life support. As Reyna holds her father's hand, she realizes for the first time that it is the same shape as hers. She asks herself if she would have gone with him to El Atroledo if she had known how hard it would be. As Poppy breathes his last, she decides that the answer is still yes. About the author. Reina Grande lived in Iguala, in poverty for her first eight years. Her parents left her and her brothers in the care of an abusive grandmother when they moved to the U.S. to try to make more money. When she was eight, her father took her, her brother Mago, and her brother Carlos across the border to live with him in Los Angeles. It was a scary and illegal trip. In Los Angeles, Reyna and her brothers got used to life in America, but they were always afraid of what their alcoholic, controlling father would do if they did anything wrong. Reyna used creative writing as a way to express herself and to show her father that she was making the most of the rare chance to live in the United States. Reyna went on to get degrees from Pasadena City College, UC Santa Cruz, and Antioch College. Grande has written two novels and two memoirs. She won an American Book Award and an International Book Award, and she teaches creative writing at UCLA and at writing workshops around the country. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.